And the scripture said, now. Now unto him that is able. How many still believe he's able? Amen. Amen. Do you believe he's able tonight? Say amen. 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 There's a story in the word of God that I want to turn into a narrative this evening. And uh, I'm not going to take the text because it's so familiar to you. But what I want to talk to you about is how to have a breakthrough or breaking out of the spot that you are in. Here's a news bulletin for you. Most of the church world, most church people live in ruts. I'm not going to put a percentage on it, but for the vast, vast majority, most people live in a spiritual rut. They're just going through the motions. They're just going. They can't remember the last time they got turned loose in a church service and forgot about what time it was, forgot about tomorrow, forgot about the biscuits and the steak, and forgot about everything else and just enjoyed the moving of the Spirit of God. I don't want to live my life spiritually in a rut. I decided a long time ago, when I go to the house of the Lord, I figure, I figure there's something I need from God, and I want to press my way till I receive what I need from the Lord. And whether you're Brother Flanders and uh, Brother Polk and 91 years old, or whether you're one of these young boys right here just starting out in life, I'm not excluding anybody here tonight. We all need something from the Lord. And most of us are living in ruts. Somebody said a rut is a grave with both ends knocked out. You feel like you might be in a spiritual rut tonight? When's the last time you sit in a different pew? Matter of fact, we've been singing the same songs for how many years? And we're still using songbooks. Not because you need them. Because that's the way it started. We've had them memorized for 35 or 40 years. But we're still using songbooks. Sometimes we just do things. Because that's the way we've always done them. It might do you good tonight. Just to move to a different pew. On a different side of the building. Just to realize you can get a different viewpoint. It's amazing how different the church looks just sitting in a different pew. I love when visitors come in because the visitors don't understand that there are unwritten name tags on those pews. I love that. I love to see your apple cart get upset. It's almost like panic and fear gets a hold. Like, what am I supposed to do now? Go find another seat. And if those are all full, wouldn't you love to have a church so full people had to sit up on the platform? I'd love love for us every Sunday to have to sit out chairs, wouldn't you? Some of you wouldn't because you'd have to give up your seat. You might, I'd be, I'd, I'd stand all service if we could, somebody could have my pew. I'd stand all service if we could pack this house with people for Jesus. See sinners saved. Living in a rut. Living in a rut. I really, I'd, I'd love to see somebody get shook loose tonight. I'd love somebody just to break out of the rut that you are in. So the first thing that we've got to do is we've got to decide whether or not we need a change. We've got to decide whether or not that we really need something from the Lord. If you're going to exclude yourself from the list of people that need something from God, what I have to say for you tonight is irrelevant. But if by chance you're in this building tonight and you'd say, I really could use Jesus to come by in my life. It's been a long time since I really felt the power of God moving in my heart. I didn't ask you how many church services you've been to lately. I didn't ask you how many songs you sang tonight. I'm just asking you about the moving of the Spirit of God in your heart and in your life. 
because there was one man in God's word one day that is sitting on the side of the road and the Bible says that he begins to cry out. He is crying out in response to the fact that Jesus is passing by and this man knows I'm tired of living like I am living. I'm tired of being in the shape that I am in and so I've heard that Jesus can alter the circumstances of life. I've heard that Jesus can just rearrange everything. Matter of fact, he probably had heard that Jesus can make the dead live again. So if Jesus can make the dead live again, certainly he can meet my need. Is that the way you feel about it tonight? Amen. I, there's some that need a breakthrough in the house of the Lord tonight because you're just sitting there. You're sitting there in a spiritual rut. I'm not going to preach you out of that rut. The choir isn't going to sing you out of that rut. We're not going to revive you out of that rut. It's all going to start the same way that this text started out. And this man says, I'm tired of living like this. And he begins to cry out. Now it's important to notice that he cries out to who? To Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. Can we still cry out to Jesus? I'd love for the mamas to get shook loose tonight to where they got to hand over the babies to somebody else and begin to shout and say, Jesus, I just need the power of God moving in my life. Amen, Brother Greg, wouldn't it be all right if your class led the charge tonight and just said, Jesus, we need a revival in this college career class. Amen, to weeks ago we said uh, that we're going to be the next generation that t p picks up the banner and leads the charge forward and we're not going to live in a rut we're not going to just go through the motions uh, we're not just going to play games uh, but Jesus uh, we're calling out on you tonight uh, and we're ready to come out of this rut uh, amen that's what David said over in that text uh, when he said deep calleth unto deep. Amen. Really what David said, I am tired of living in a box. I am tired of thinking that we have exhausted the only way that we think God wants us to have church. Amen. Oh God. Amen. He began to cry out to Jesus and I got news for you. Amen. You fill in the blank of what your need is but when you begin to cry out to Jesus, I'm I'm gonna tell you he is the one that can meet your need. Amen. Regardless whether it is emotional, it is psychological, it is relational, it is emotional, it is spiritual, whatever that it is. I said the name of Jesus. We begin to cry out to his name. Amen. You better get ready. Amen. We're beginning to get on the brink of something happening in the presence of God. Amen, isn't that what the life of Jesus really was? Amen, three and a half years up and down the sandy shores of Galilee. He was healing the sick and raising the dead. He was unstopping deaf ears and opening blinded eyes. He didn't come to do that, but he was so interrupted because people said he can do it. He can do it. We need a miracle and he can do it. I've got blind eyes, but he can open them. I've got stuff ears but he can open them I've got dead loved ones but he can raise them again I would to God tonight everybody in this building could begin to cry out to that name Jesus that name above every name that name to which every knee shall bow every tongue will confess amen I'm trying to get you to realize you might just be living in a rut You've just been doing the same thing over and 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 over again. You can be a Sunday school teacher in a rut. You can be a pastor in a rut. You can be a choir member in a rut. You can be a church member in a rut. 
But he began to cry out to Jesus. So before we go any farther, you and I have to understand right now, is there anybody anywhere that needs anything from Jesus uh, that would say, I am absolutely tired uh, of the situation I've got. I don't want to go another day. I don't want to go another week. I don't want to go another hour. I'm, I'm in a rut. I am absolutely in a rut. I'm always hurried. I don't have time to pray before church. I come into church and I slump down on my pew. And before I know it, I've thought about everything else. And they tell us it's time to go. And we're dismissed. I go work all week. I'm stressed with the kids. Uh, I'm trying to get the bills paid. Uh, we come in Sunday morning. One of the kids gets sick. We have to leave early. We come back Sunday night. I'm worried about Monday. And I've been doing this thing for months. And I'm ready for a change. I'm ready to break out of this thing. I don't care, Jesus said. If you've been there 30 and 8 years. He found one man 30 and 8 years. Are you ready? Are you ready for a change? If I didn't believe in the power of Jesus, I'd shut my Bible and quit preaching because I know we can get it done. But oh, friend, tonight, knowing that he is here, knowing that our Savior is still alive, knowing that the God we serve, he still has all power in heaven and in earth, it gives me hope that I am in the right place tonight, that no matter how discouraged, that no matter how wayward, that no matter how distracted or depressed or diseased I said no matter who is here and what the situation is I said Jesus is greater I said Jesus is greater and if I could get you to say Lord I need help Jesus Jesus thou son of David Jesus I'm going to tell you you could get his attention because Jesus was not headed to this man sitting there he was headed somewhere else. Which leads me to the second point. Because as you, soon as you try to start breaking out of your rut, as soon as you try to do something different, you know what that's going to happen? People are just going to watch you. It's going to watch you. What's he doing? Why is he doing that? What is, what is, why are you standing up right now? What is wrong? Why does he always jump up and down during church? Why does our Sunday school superintendent hand, why is he always up there shouting for? Because he don't want to get in a rut he doesn't want to get in a rut we've got some friends from Tifton again tonight they, I'm used to seeing them on Sunday morning they're back Sunday night why would they come in on a Sunday night why not just take a day off and enjoy the sights of Savannah maybe it's because they don't want to live in a spiritual rut amen that's why we go to church several times a week I don't want to get into a rut hey, Lily Tomlinson said America's in a rat race the bad thing about a rat race is even if you win the race you're still a rat I don't want to be in the race like a rat and I don't want to be in a spiritual rat race as well trying to get church over as quick as I can trying to come in sing three songs take an offering take prayer requests give the sermon and go home and say whoop we had church it's more than that I've got to get to the spot where I got what I need from Jesus that I did not come Come in and leave the same way. God never let us get to the point where it's a polar bear in the pulpit and chosen frozen in the pew. But let there be a red hot, a genuine move of the power of the Holy Ghost. 
Could you possibly be in a rut? If so, he began to call out to him. You know what happened? Jesus stopped. Woo! He stopped for one man. One man. You are so absolutely important to God. If you began to call out to Jesus, he would stop this entire service just to get you what you need. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. It's not a hierarchy that you have to be influential to get his attention. But here was a broke, poor, blind man that matter of fact didn't even have a name he was known as the son of Bartimaeus we didn't even know his name really he's an unknown outcast of society but he had the name Jesus and when he called the name Jesus Jesus stopped and said what can I do for you I said tonight whatever your need is I'll hear the answer is Jesus I said it's Jesus and if you call that name he could stop this service. Now like I said there are going to be some people shh 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 calm down calm down don't get so excited wake up you're running my illustration shh Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. But when you're trying to get out of a rut, but when you're blind and the answer is walking by, and you don't get your need met you can't sit there all cute and silly you can't sit there all reserved laid back when you're desperate when you're desperate you do whatever it takes you'll crawl you'll roll you'll jump you'll run you'll dance you'll shout you'll scream to do anything To get out of the rut. To get out of the rut. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I got the right message if I could get anointed preaching it. Amen, we might see something around this altar. Amen, some of you are looking at a block wall. Amen, you're so in a rut. All you see is a concrete wall. You don't see any way out. You don't see any way through. You don't see any exit. You don't see any hope. You don't You don't even see another reason why to pray again. You don't see a reason why to fast again. The devil is a liar. I said the devil is a liar. I said Jesus is greater. I said Jesus is greater. There's deliverance in this building tonight. There's hope in this building tonight. There's joy and peace in this building tonight. Jesus, we have overcomplicated the process. And we have so tried to compact the service that we give him about five minutes. If he doesn't do it in about five minutes, we're moving on. If he doesn't do it by 7.30, we're moving on. If he doesn't do it by the time we're tired, we're moving on. But I may just be preaching to one person right now. I'm telling you, you can get out of that. You're in. You can absolutely, so help me God, get out of that rut that you are in, that you feel is hopeless, that you feel is endless, that you see no way out, that you see no deliverance, that you see no exit. I'm telling you tonight that Jesus will never allow anything that he does not make a way of escape. 
you're going to have to do something about it. We're going to flip this thing backwards. The choir's not going to do it. The preaching's not going to do it. It's going to start with you. It's going to start with you by saying, I don't like where I am at. I don't like how the devil has pushed me back. I don't like how I feel. I don't like not feeling God's spirit. I don't like losing my praise. I don't like coming the same way and leaving the same way. I don't like living like I'm living. Well, good news. Let's do something about it right here. Let's do something about it tonight. I said his name is Jesus. I said his name is Jesus. He's in the building. I said his name is Jesus. He's got all power in heaven and in earth. But this man, Jesus didn't tell him to do this. But this man, Brother Chris, when he gets ready to go to Jesus, I love this text. After everybody just said, shh, shh, shh. So that's why you're still in a rut. You started to move and somebody said, shh. And you listen to him. Don't you wish children were that easy? If you said shh one time and they got quiet. You were going to make a move for Jesus. And somebody said shh. You better make sure it's God. And you've been sitting there for a long time. Somebody went shh. You got your feelings hurt and you've never sought for the Holy Ghost since. Somebody went shh. And you've been shh ever since. But I love, the Bible said he cried out a great deal. I don't know what you think about a great deal. He was making some noise. And when he got ready to go to Jesus, your Bible said, he cast aside his garment. (laughs) It was the garment of a beggar. It was the garment of a beggar. And he said, once I get to Jesus, I'm not going to need this garment anymore. I'm, I'm not coming to say, I'm not coming to, I'm not coming back like I'm, I'm leaving. When I get to Jesus and I touch him and he touches me, I'm not going to be a blind beggar anymore. I'm not going to need this anymore. I'm telling you tonight, I feel the spirit of liberty. I feel the spirit of the Holy Ghost. That if you'd make a move to Jesus, uh, you could cast aside some garments. uh, You could cast some things aside uh, and say, I'm never going to be that way again. I'm leaving different. I'm leaving changed. But we're back where we started. Do you think you're possibly living in a rut? Do you? Do you think you're living in a rut? Well, what are you going to do about it? Now, I've only known some of you for 12, 12 years, so I can't say you've been there your whole life. But some of you have been in a 12-year rut. I can't say that definitively. Because I've never seen... The Holy Ghost operate in your life. Wouldn't you like to change that right now? The vast majority of the church world lives in a rut. And you can change it right now. I tell you what, Brother Brent, Brother Brian, Brother Chris, you all just circle. Circle the church and come down this aisle right here. And uh, get together. You guys just be the group of Jesus. And uh, I don't know which one of you wants to fight for first at the head. And first shall be last. And the last shall be first. But all of that. One of you decide you're going to be Jesus. Brother Brian, you can join them. Brother John, you can grab them. And uh, go with them. What are you going to do? Just kind of just kind of go pew by pew. Just. Every few seconds, just kind of move another pew. I don't think he's in a rut, do you? I've never seen him act the same way two services. But what about you? 
What about you? Been doing it the same way a long time. You've lost your hope that you can even get out of the situation you're in. Amen. Hold steady right there, Brother Chris. You've lost the absolute hope that you can get out of the situation that you are in. Maybe it's been so, so, so tiresome. Maybe it's been so wearisome that you have even stopped praying about what God can do. The devil's got you so backed in a corner. Your hands are down. Your spirit is down. You're here in body and thank God for it. But your spirit is broken. Amen. Your hope is broken vanished, uh, your praise is withered, uh, and you're just going through the motions, uh, and I'm telling you that the Spirit of God, uh, that is not His will for the church, uh, that we come the same way month after month, uh, and leave like we came, uh, but tonight, uh, would you love uh, for everybody uh, to leave with joy unspeakable, uh, would you love uh, for everybody uh, to leave with peace uh, and power shouting in the power of the Holy Ghost wouldn't you love wouldn't you love tonight to be able to go home and lay down and go to sleep and not stay awake worrying and fretting and troubled in spirit and in soul I'm telling you it is possible but you've got to do what the blind man did Jesus 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 shh, shh, shh. I don't have time to shh. Jesus I need help have mercy have mercy I need healed I need healed I would to God right now that you'd say Jesus why don't you just lift up your voice and say Jesus 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 while they're moving you say this is my chance this is my chance. This is my opportunity. Jesus. I say make a move right now. I say make a move right now. I say step out right now. I say risk it right now. I say tonight uh, could be your night. I said tonight uh, he could fill you uh, with the Holy Ghost. Uh, I said tonight uh, he could. He done it a I feel his power. I feel his anointing. I say step out right now. Jesus. Jesus. We don't have time just to play church. We don't have time just to go through the motion. I said it's a chance. It's an opportunity. It's been years since you felt the power of the Holy Ghost. Been years since you spoke in tongues. Been years since you danced in the power of the Holy Ghost. Devil's got you bound. Devil took your praise. Devil took your peace. Devil took your joy. Ah, uh, ah, uh, come on. Greater is he that is in you. Jesus. 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 Oh, what do you need from the Lord? Jesus is past.